Um, so I wanted to do a couple more examples. Uh, the, the sort of form that we saw uh, in, in the first couple of videos was the zero over zero form. I wanted to make sure we saw some of the, the double infinities as well. Um, also some of the, the limits as we go towards infinity. Um, not to say you kind of need to have one of those be one to, to sort of get the other, but you know, that's just some stuff that we're working with, right? There's lots of different kind of variations here. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity. This is 2e to the x over 3x plus 4. And again, you know, just as kind of a first, you know, at first glance, just like can we really sort of evaluate this any other way? The answer is not really. I mean, we, we didn't spend tons and tons and tons of times working with limits. Uh, in Calc 1, there's, there's lots sort of deeper you could get into any of this stuff. Um, but as far as just what are the basic limit rules that we need to do calculus, we didn't get super far into something like this. Um, so what can we do? Well, if we try to sub in, right, where is this stuff going to head? So, so if I go towards infinity, 2 times e to the infinity, I mean, e to the infinity, right, it's going to be big. Times 2, it's, it's just going to be bigger, right? So that's going to go to infinity. This would be, right, kind of 3 times infinity plus 4. Well, okay, infinity times 3 is, is infinity plus four is just also infinity. So this is just bigger and bigger and bigger to positive numbers. So what we get here is our sort of infinity over infinity, you know, kind of two different styles, right? This sort of e to the x exponential style versus just this more polynomial kind of style and a simple polynomial with that. Um, nevertheless, it, it, it works. I mean, it's, it's perfectly fine. So we can use our L'Hopital setup here. And what we're gonna do, this should be equal to the derivative, right? x goes to the same value, x goes to infinity. I'm gonna do the derivative of the top, uh, of course, because it's e to the x. The derivative is e to the x. So I'm gonna get two times e to the x again. That one really doesn't change. What happens on the bottom though, is this is gonna go from three x plus four to just three, right? x goes to one, four goes to zero. So then this is two times e to the x, just over three instead. What happens then, as far as trying to sort of sub this in, so then this is two times e to the infinity. I know that's gonna be very, very, very big. Just over three, there's no x here on the bottom. So what's gonna happen is I get this kind of infinity over three. Well, you know, if something is infinite, right? Something is getting larger and larger and larger and larger without any kind of boundary, without any kind of like uh, upper limit, uh, limit. Um, you know, what's gonna happen if I divide it by three? Well, okay, I mean, it'll be a little bit smaller than it was before, but if we're just like heading up, you know, a million, a billion, a trillion, you know, 10 trillion, 100 trillion, uh, you know, as far as you can go, you know, if we end up dividing by three at some point, just like big whoop, it still is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, infinity is almost like a black hole uh, in that, you know, if you multiply, divide, you know, subtract just numbers off of it, it still is going to get infinitely big and it, it doesn't care. It maybe gets there a little more slowly, but our answer here is still going to be infinity. So that limit is going to be infinity. Again, that might be one where the, you know, maybe the, the book answer would then be sort of, it does not exist, right? The limit doesn't exist because it doesn't go to a number. Um, but we can, we can describe it as positive infinity. So that's how I'm going to write it. Um, you might say that doesn't seem a whole lot better than this, but you know, this infinity over infinity, this is another form, you know, it's what we call an indeterminate form, right? Meaning it, it kind of could be anything and by itself, we have no real way of knowing what it is or, or what it isn't. Uh, it just doesn't give us enough information. Uh, let's maybe do one more. Let's do the limit here as X goes to infinity. Uh, how about... 4x squared plus 6x plus 1 over 2x cubed plus 3x. This is almost a little bit of a throwback. Um, in pre-calculus, when you're doing graphs of rational functions, one of the things you do is you look for end behavior and and that is right, so you have a polynomial over a polynomial and you're trying to look for the end behavior. Um, essentially the end behavior is a limit as x goes to infinity or, or negative infinity, right, would be the end behavior to the left. Um, you know, without really saying it, you were kind of doing limits back in those, back in pre-calculus. Um, we had some rules we kind of said, if, if you have these polynomials, um, you know, really what you're looking at are, the, are sort of the top two 
you're sort of looking at the leading terms of each, they're really gonna be the ones that have the biggest impact and then you can kind of get your end behavior from there. Um, another way to do it is to do this L'Hopital's rule kind of stuff, right? Assuming you kind of get one of these forms. Uh, if we do our kind of quick sub, this is a little silly to kind of write, you know, four times infinity squared plus six times infinity plus one. I mean, that's just gonna be bigger and bigger and bigger. Everything's added up here, right? So that's obviously just gonna be infinity, right? That's, that's everything is infinity there. This would be on the bottom, two times infinity cubed plus three times infinity, right? Same kind of stick. Everything here gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then just, you know, more and more and more. So infinity and infinity here and here. That's gonna be one of our forms, right? So we can apply L'Hopital's rule. This fits the bill. So what we'll do is take derivatives. And then our limit, right? Same thing, x goes to infinity. So what's my derivative here? This would be eight x to the one plus six, right? Plus zero over eight x to the two plus three. You know, if we go to sub in again, this is gonna be another one kind of like in the last video where, you know, the stuff here kind of ends up going to infinity again. We're gonna to have to do a second round of it, right? Eight times infinity is infinity, plus six is, is just more infinity. Infinity squared is infinity times eight is infinity, plus three is infinity, right? You know, it's, it's just sort of taking all this kind of lowly arithmetic, this plus minus kind of stuff. Uh, and it, it, it just sort of all feeds into it being a bigger and bigger number. So we'll just do a second round. So let's do L'Hopital again. Our limit, x goes to infinity. So now we're getting somewhere. So then this is gonna be eight over, right? Eight times two, 16x, right? Uh, you know, the six here and the three go away. You know, if you want, I guess you could you could reduce this. This would be kind of one over two X. I don't think that's really gonna make a big difference here because what's gonna happen, you know, if we send this to infinity. So the top doesn't have an X anymore. We've essentially sort of taken derivatives long enough that we've kind of run out of variables up top. That's kind of a way to get this done. The bottom is 16 times X. So that's 16 times positive infinity. And so where this is gonna head is eight over infinity. Uh, and what happens to us here, right? So we sort of said in some of the earlier ones where you ended up with a number over zero, something over zero dividing by, by zero, you know, if you have a number divided by zero, it essentially sends you off to positive or negative infinity. If you divide by infinity, right? So that is your kind of the bottom here, right? Your denominator is getting larger and larger and larger and larger. And the top is just sitting put at eight. So what happens then is the bottom, right, kind of swallows it up. You know, it's it's 16 and it's and it's one half, right? It's it's 80 and it's one tenth. It's 800 and it's it's one over 100. Bigger and bigger and bigger on the bottom. What happens here is the whole thing ends up going towards zero, right? So just a couple rounds of of L'Hopital's rule gets us there, um, and we get our answer. Um, you know, that's a few examples. There's, there's lots of different variations here. Um, there's, there's lots of different uh, stuff you can you can do. You could do trig stuff. You, you know, you could do sines and cosines. You could do tangents, right? Um, you know, you could do roots and different things. You'll see a couple more examples and, and different kind of uh, different kind of things in the book. Um, but it's all following this kind of basic pattern. Um, the other thing I wanted to just sort of list, right? So if you want to explore further, so if you would like to know more, um, one of the things you can investigate, so I, I just want to kind of list this. It, it's not stuff we're gonna go into, you know, we would need to do, you know, three, four, four, kind of video is to sort of run through all these other extra techniques and, and we're just not necessarily gonna, gonna use it here. I don't really wanna get so far into this that we'd have to be sort of running all this stuff. Um, but there are a couple other forms. Um, 
that you can kind of start with and then kind of transform into a L'Hopital's Rule type problem. So um, you can adapt these other indeterminate forms. for L'Hopital's rule use. So I just want to list what they would look like. So the other forms that you could use would be things like zero times infinity, um, which is kind of an interesting one, zero times infinity. Um, the, they kind of move there, you would say, oh, you know, what happens with these indeterminate forms is you get a couple different rules that are running into each other. So you would say anything times zero is zero, and then on the other hand, you would probably say anything times infinity is infinity. So you have these sort of two principles kind of running right into each other. What happens uh, in this case if I have these sort of two contradictory things and, and they're kind of both happening at the same time? And the answer with any of these forms, right, is, well, it depends, right? I mean, that was sort of the same, uh, conceptually the same kind of problem with the zero over zero or the infinity over infinity. You know, anything with a zero on top is zero, but then anything kind of divided by zero should, should kind of go towards an infinity. So how do you kind of square that circle? How do you sort of have both of those things happen at once? Um, so zero times infinity, uh, the, the move there is to rewrite one of them sort of as a fraction. Um, and so you can actually sort of say and conceptually sort of say zero would be the same thing as like one over infinity and then rewrite it, you sort of then get a stack, infinity over infinity. Or you could say, right, infinity is would be sort of written as like a one over zero. You can kind of rewrite the, the terms to sort of get, get those forms written and sort of get one of the two kind of fractionized um, and then you get your, your uh, zero over zero or your infinity over infinity form. So you can kind of do that. Um, Another form that's interesting would be infinity minus infinity. So, right, I mean, that's a case where you're saying, okay, so, you know, infinity is, is infinity, right, is, is very, very big, but what happens if there's a subtraction with another infinity? The answer, of course, is it depends, right? It kind of depends on the size of the two infinities is, is gonna sort of be, a, a, have an impact here. Um, so there's different kind of algebra techniques you can use there, you kind of wanna, try to get a common denominator so that you can write it as a fraction. And then, you know, once you've done that, you can hopefully sort of get one of these zero over zero or infinity over infinity forms out of it. Um, the other uh, indeterminate forms you can use are some uh, exponential forms. So for example, one to the infinity or zero to the zero or infinity raised to the zero. So any of those kind of exponential forms are, are again, things that could end up being any number of, of, sort of give you any number of different results um, by themselves. They're not really gonna tell you anything. Um, to do L'Hopital's rule kind of stuff, you need to sort of use some, uh, some exponential rules and some log rules, you, you, right? You're trying to sort of take something that is an exponential form and, and try to get into the power. So you're probably using some kind of logs to make that happen. Um, um, but again, we're not gonna really get too deep into those techniques. We're not going any deeper than me just sort of telling you they exist, honestly. Um, you know, if you guys think that's that's extremely cool or are, or are very interested in it, let me know and I can sort of make a bonus video that just kind of has some of those techniques. They could be kind of fun, you know, all this stuff, I, I think if you, you know, I always like to think of it as sort of problem solving and little puzzles. Um, and so some of these other forms can give you some, some pretty interesting uh, examples and some pretty interesting kind of setups. Um, but just to save time and not have us, you know, have to have a whole section here that's like, you know, seven, eight, nine kind of videos long. I just wanna see these initial forms, just our, our initial zero over zero, infinity over infinity forms. You know, it's enough to know that these these guys exist, and sort of if we run into them later, we'll we'll maybe double back and and kind of uh, hit them again. But for now, that'll be what we do.